This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Y'all, your thoughts ever race like F1 drivers through your brain at all hours of the day, but especially when you're trying to go to sleep at night? This has been one of the great struggles of my life, I think. Once I get to sleep, I can stay asleep. I'm a sleeping fool, in fact, but falling asleep can be difficult for me because as soon as I lay my head down, turn my light off, my brain decides this is what we play for and just starts running on overdrive, buddy, all night long. I can't get it to stop. Every bit of minutia in my life, every, th- every stressor that I have suddenly being tabulated by my brain endlessly. Do you ever have that problem? Is that ever, do you ever find that just as you're trying to fall asleep, your brain just won't stop talking to you? Do your thoughts start racing right before bed or at other inopportune moments like that? Well, it turns out one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk them through. Therapy gives you a place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. Cho, you love therapy. I do love therapy, and I, too, have my thoughts racing from time to time. And used to, you know what, man? You know, being from where we're from, and I think especially being a dude, I always just thought, well, this is just what I got. You know, this is just how that goes. Uh, and finally, I reached a, kind of a breaking point. I knew I was about to have kids, and I was like, hey, let's get this, let's get this figured out. And I started going to therapy and don't get me wrong. The medication helps too. But like, I genuinely think that the therapy has made more of an impact because like, look, just this week, um, I was feeling super overwhelmed, super stressed. And I went back to some of my old therapy worksheets and looked at some of the problem solving skills that me and my therapist worked through and using those exercises, I was able to calm myself down, compartmentalize everything better. Sincerely, Therapy, my life is AD and BC uh, of therapy, and, and it's a lot better on this end. Uh, so if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. That's my favorite part, by the way. I don't like to go places uh, unless it's to see Trey and eat ribs. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And here's the important part. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Sometimes you just don't jive with somebody. You know what I'm saying? I got lucky, but so you know, but you can go back and forth. It's totally cool. So get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash POA today to get 10% off your first month. That's better H E L P dot com slash P O A. Can you believe we've had seven months without an NFL game? Crazy, right? Well, good thing that's over. NFL is here. DraftKings Sportsbook is here. DraftKings is an official sports betting partner of the NFL, and they are giving you a can't-miss offer for one week. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Check the app to see what you get. Download now and use code POA to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That's code POA only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-N-Y or text H-O-P-N-Y to 467 467- Three six nine in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call eight 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 seven eight nine seven 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 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resorts, twenty one plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. C ccdkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after insurance. Eligibility and deposit de- deposit restrictions apply. There you go. <laughs> smooth move buddy that's hard that fat i mean you did better than i did that fast talking's hard what's it's up hard. our heads we're back it's it's hard you know it's funny because i was Especially like no, a I'm... lot of it's just numbers and letters as that's opposed to just words up. that that yeah. makes it yeah. particularly difficult that fucked me up i was like no i got this i can be an auctioneer but usually whenever i've done that it's something that like i wrote you know what i mean yeah. not like a cold read but yeah i think i did my best though you know i tried and uh and hey by the way buddy we are two and one on the DraftKings uh gimmick we're getting beat by yeah. mick foley we're getting beat by kevin nash we're getting beat by jim ross but we're and tied with matt hardy to not you know not to pile on because it's my fault too i didn't catch it or nothing but <laughs> the only reason we're two and one you know arguably <laughs> It's because the one that we lost was a game that didn't even happen. Uh, we picked, 
we picked a winner for a game that was not occurring. So you'll yeah. lose that one every time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In fairness, the guy, that game is this coming week. Uh, but I, I don't know about you, but I want to, I, I personally would rather switch to, I don't know, we could do whatever you want, but if it was me, I'd switch to all NFL picks. Cause we can do that, right? We can pick either. We can do whatever I think, we want. I think so. And, and yeah, a mixture dude, too. That, uh, that was we me. Can mix it up, Scru- I guess. On DraftKings, if you'll know, they have like, if you're not paying attention and you scroll too much, you will get into next week's games. And I wasn't paying attention to dates. I was looking for uh, values. You know what I mean? I was just looking for values because the way I bet, that would have totally been fine. You know what I mean? I'm not used to doing like a weekly competition, but yeah, I fucked up. That's on me. But here we are. It's time to get fancy. Now I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to be continuing the conversation on medieval torture devices a little later on. Uh, a couple other things up top. I don't know. Do you, you want to go first? You, uh, well, I just wanted to let everybody know because people had bitched at me in a fun, loving way as our POA, uh, people do in the comments and such about they, they ever, a lot of people were mad at me for doing a three parter on Barbie. They're like, how can you do a three parter on Barbie, but not even having seen the movie. And I wanted to be like, well, I'm not, I'm not doing a history of the movie barbie i was okay. doing a history of barbie so it didn't matter i thought you were saying they just got mad at you just for doing a three-parter on barbie no 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 no, like, no they oh, loved yeah. it no okay, no they loved they loved that shit everybody was really complimentary but they were like i don't understand how you could be doing this and not seeing the movie well i finally saw the movie last night and we don't have to talk too much about it because lord knows we have talked about barbie a lot but i would like to say absolutely loved it and uh-huh. I'm so glad that I did my research before watching the movie because it made the movie hit harder for me. Like, there were so many little details that I was like, holy shit, I knew that. Like, when they pulled Skipper's arm and her tits popped up, I was like, I fucking knew they did that. That's real. It kind of worked in reverse, too, because I saw the movie before you did parts two and three, and there were multiple Mm -hmm. things you brought up that I was like, yeah, that was in the movie. Or, like, um, in particular, the thing about Midge, you know. I was like, yeah, Barbie's pregnant friend or whatever. You're like, no, she's just fat. I was like, well, you know. (laughs) According to the movie, she was pregnant. Uh, By the way, my favorite part of the movie is when Will Ferrell's CEO character gets to Barbie land, and he's running around, and it's like he's gone through this whole thing and is not freaked out by anything, and then he turns to the right, and there's Midge, and he goes, ah! (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that was hilarious. I did not understand something, though. Um, okay. When there was a, when was it? When was there a big ass Barbie? Because there was one in the movie, and was that? I don't remember that being something in real life. Do you mean when it very first showed her and she was huge, like no. in the baby doll scene, or you no, mean? No, I mean that there is a. Um, oh, you mean plus size? There's a plus size Barbie, and oh, and I and just they, assumed they had just started doing that, but I I don't know. I didn't look, in, and look, look into. And look, they it. should. And look, they totally should. But I know how the world of Hollywood and stuff treats like plus size. They always get. They usually when they say something's plus size, it's just what a regular woman looks like. You know yes. what I mean? And that was, you know, I was I don't. It was pretty plus size, which is fine. I just, I think I'd have known if they'd have made that plus size of a Barbie. That's all I'm saying. But I did love it. One note um, is that the Barbies, you know, go to the world. I understand all the dudes saying, like, it's an anti-male movie. I'm like, dog, they just showed the world, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. They just showed the fucking world. But then when the Barbies get back, you think that she's about to have this moment of clarity of like, oh, my God, this is what we've been doing to the Kins. And uh, they kind of just go fuck this we got to take it back <laughs> just like you know what i mean like they they've taken over and now we got to take it back and they just were like the kins don't get agency anymore like they're just, they're back to being their bullshit way so i don't feel like they well, learned they a lesson giving them, i don't know i mean you just saw it and i saw it weeks ago now but like they 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 were giving them some they were making some concessions just not many like i remember one there it's like can we get a can on the supreme court and they're like no but we can give yeah. you or are they were they like well, you can have one they were like on a lower know. circuit judge uh, lower circuit judge okay that's right. fair that's fair but and i again, feel like it was them being like listen we're going to ease into letting y'all have yeah. some rights or whatever but they didn't just like yeah yeah but which is exactly what well, which is exactly the bad part about the world cuz that's what we do you know what i mean like I, I'm just saying, yeah. I don't think the Barbies really learned a goddamn lesson, realistically. I don't think they learned much of a lesson. 
Well, I don't know. I, again, it's been too long since I saw. I remember thinking because I saw all the woke shit about it before I went. And I remember thinking it was actually pretty even handed. Uh, and you yeah, know, I thought that they showed. Like I said, there was lots of jokes about women too, like the depression Barbie, that yeah. whole thing. Like that was super hilarious. Dude, and dude, when Ryan Reynolds, or when when uh, Ryan Gosling goes, once I learned the patriarchy wasn't just about horses, I kind of lost interest. Yeah, <laughs> it was fucking killing me, man. How, dude? I said I know it's like ironic because of the whole nature of the movie, and he's you know the straight white man in the leading part. But like, dude. How hard did he crush in that fucking movie? So hard. Man? He wasn't in the movie as much as I thought. Like, I really thought Gosling? it was going to be. Yeah, as much as I thought. He was he in was, it a bunch. He was in it a bunch, but still not as much as I thought. Like, I really thought him and Barbie was going to be together, like, the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, the movie is actually, it was way deep. Like, you, you had set it up to me as, like, this movie's deep. It's but, but, like, I still wasn't expecting it to be that much of a surgical ripping a part of society that it was that sounds stupid me saying but like no he was in the movie but but still still there were plenty of scenes he wasn't in and i wouldn't have bet that there was any scenes he wasn't in but yeah dude he fucking he he's unreal and i love that was that helen mirren narrating i think so yeah yeah i love I that part when they try to make the point of like you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to blah, blah, blah. And Helen Mirren cuts in and goes, by the way, studio execs, uh, Margot Robbie, not ideal casting. If you're going to yeah, describe you her like make this. this point. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she wakes uh, up, she, she's talking about how she, she just feels ugly and all this yeah. stuff because of whatever else. And then, yeah, she's like, yeah, note to the filmmakers. You probably should not cast Margot Robbie if you want to yeah. make this point, which was hilarious. Also a little thing like when Gosling, when he has that line about his mini fridge, and how like <laughs> useless the freezer in it is or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so true. The way he delivers that absolutely fucking killed me, dude. Like he, it's just he's so he funny. He should be in more comedies, man. Uh, yeah. I know that he's been in a couple. I mean, not straight comedies really. He's always in like your romantic comedies, but like now he, I got one and I know you've seen it, but a wreck for our listeners if you haven't seen it. Uh nice, the guy. nice guys with him and Russell Crowe is one of my favorite movies of the last 10 years. He's absolutely fucking hilarious in it. And it's not a straight comedy either. It's super. It's a Shane Black movie, so it's like a crime comedy. And it's it definitely leans awesome. comedy, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. But it's but it's like dramatic. It's you know, it's about PIs and murder yeah. and shit. Like it's not it's just great. A, like a you know anchorman type comedy. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that every movie that's good they should just you know hemorrhage the piss out of it and do sequels. But I would love if the nice guys had been like a rush Me hour too. situation oh, with yeah. those two dudes because and i know that you won't ever be able to recapture the magic because part of the magic of a buddy cop is well they're not buddies now they're buddies you know what i mean but like i mean hell like i just said though rush hour did it three movies and all of them are fucking bangers so yeah great yeah. shit so there's that's all i got to say about barbie finally watched it y'all and it was good uh, the only other thing i'll say i can't remember if i mentioned this last time or not and i don't know your your baby's still a baby but like uh, the scene with the mom in the car where she has that like flashback about mm -hmm. the her daughter, her teenage daughter, them like playing with Barbies when she was little yeah. and then the daughter getting older and not caring about Barbies anymore. And now her daughter like hates her because she's a teenager and all that shit. Yeah. That shit got me good, boy. Well, because I've been, I'm, my sons aren't really like that yet, but it's like, they will be. It's right around the corner for me. And it's something I've been thinking about a lot. Like, I'm not, I'm not ready for all that at all. Well, obviously, but, you know, we can't stop it. No. And obviously, my baby is, like you said, still a baby. And thus, we are far from that. But I, even me, though, still seeing that, like, couldn't help but. You know, cause you know how like how my anxiety and depression be. A lot of times it's ruminating on the past, uh, yeah. thinking about dumb things that I did. But there's also a huge part of me that projects myself 15 years into the future and goes, I bet it won't hit then either. Oh, you yeah. know, and uh, sure. yeah, I was doing that. Like, I think I even told Amber, I was like, like the exact words was, I'm not ready for that. Like, <laughs> I, I can't. I, the day that this, yeah. that I'm not and cool, not not even cool. I don't need to be cool. But the day that like. I just don't matter as much to him, which again, I know is going to happen. I was like, I can't like, Oh dude, I'm so glad that you said that because speaking of babies, I wanted to bring up something specifically on this show. And at first it's not going to sound like POA material, but you'll understand probably when I start talking, my baby just started eating the little jarred foods. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm super mm -hmm. excited about that because when Amber's at school during the day, I play dad. So I get to feed him all this stuff. And by the way, for all you crunchy people out there, um, 
I'm about to start making all of his baby food. That's going to happen. Like, I'm going to be that guy who's in the kitchen making the sweet potatoes and stuff. But we wanted to just try it out, you know, get some old-fashioned Gerber, right? So, so before you continue, I told this told you this before. This actually just came up on Well Read this week, but, like, funny anecdote about that. We did cloth diapers and stuff and probably would have made baby food too, except we got two huge boxes of free Gerber baby food yeah. when they were babies because my oh. neighbor in Salina had her baby taken away. So oh. it was like, woohoo, free, you know, free yeah. baby. Like Mima calls me like it, like we won the lottery or something. She's right. like, great news. You're never going to believe it. <laughs> they took the neighbor's baby. Now y'all can have all the baby <laughs> food. And we were like, shit, where I'm from, we call that the hookup, baby, you know. Uh, For the record, better off. I have no problem with Gerber. I don't have a problem yeah. with that. This is something that I just want to do because I like spending time in the kitchen. Dude, there's going to be weeks when I'm too stressed or too busy and he's going to get Gerber. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not I'm not in any way trying to do like a full turn to like, I'm doing this and you should too, like fucking vegans do. It's just something I want to do. But anyways, Trey, so today I fed my baby peas, jarred, mooshed up peas. And yeah, I the take British this love them. Yes, dude. But here's the thing. So I'm I'm doing this thing where before I feed him anything, I'm I'm, I'm like that. I'm like the cool coach you had in high school that ran with you because it's like I ain't gonna put you through something that I wouldn't fucking do myself. So I, you know, I taste the breast milk when we're giving him cereal. I'm like, look, buddy, I'm eating it. It's good. Mm. I I was like, I stuck my finger in them peas and tasted it, and I was like, this is literally the exact consistency and flavor of what them fucking Brits served us with our fish and chips platter. Like yeah. it's, it's the Mushy same, peas. but yeah. no salt, no nothing like in it. And mm -hmm. I was, and, and I was just like, yeah, well, you know, maybe you'll, and he liked it. He did like it, but I was like, they literally could be over there just getting jarred baby food and putting it on plates and nobody would know the goddamn difference. I mean, I mean, is there really any fundamental no, difference? Do you know what I mean? I guess this is like baby more. food that's peas. It's probably just mushed up peas, ain't it? Which is what mushy yeah. peas is. There probably isn't a difference. It's just it's the same more thing. liquid they than baby just, food. Yeah, it's more liquid where like it's it's ground, not just mushed. All I'm saying is, if you're if you're someone from over there and you're a fan of what they do to the peas, then you could just be if you if one of your ki uh, neighbor kids gets took by the law. Go get you fucking peas, because clearly that hits for you, and you could just have it at dinner, you know? Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, because I feel like it fits the show. This is old news, very old news. It's like pop culture shit. Everybody else knows about it, but like, and I, hell, I've known about it for three or four weeks. I keep meaning to bring it up, and I forgot. But it fits the show, and I still just think it's just the damnedest thing, so it's worth talking about. But, um, you know, Louis Thoreau, right? Legendary documentarian. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you know he's like a, a rap star now? What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Look, I'm so glad you didn't know. Yeah, this is a huge what? thing. It started on TikTok or whatever, but like Louis Thoreau like topped the hip hop charts this summer uh, huh. with, with a song. It's only like two minutes long, if that. It's very short, but like it's catchy. And I, it's called uh, Jiggle Jiggle. And it's like, the chorus goes, my what? mind doesn't jiggle, jiggle. It folds. I'd like to see you wiggle, wiggle for show. And then that, that's, that's the chorus. And, uh, is he being and, for real? Yeah. I, this is all hundred percent true. And that's, that's the chorus. That's the song. You should, uh, you should we're, definitely check it out. And we're talking and, about the guy who looks like, uh, yeah. uh, hold on. Hold, here's uh, I'm trying to think of what he looks like. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. He looks like if John Oliver washed up on the beach. That guy? Uh, when, I, I, I looked him up again after this happened, and, like, as of late, he's pretty clean-cut and looking, you know. But he's, like, super, super british you know, Academic Brit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's a, he's a smart British motherfucker. Well— and he does kind of look like John Oliver a little bit. Uh, but well, this guy, I mean, they all do. But right. uh, well, he hits for me even harder now. You know, as someone, so, here's the here's the story of how it happened, right? Because I so I was in a I was in an Uber, and this guy had a you know like a current hits playlist going or whatever, and it came on, and they're like, they say the producer's name. Sorry, I can't remember the producers. And it's like, and Louis Thoreau, and I was like, what? <laughs> and I thought it was like 
and I know this is from Tropic Thunder, but I thought it might be like an Al Pacino thing yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was a joke. Some rapper named himself after Louis Thoreau because that's hilarious because like Louis Thoreau's the most non-rap guy on earth. But then it starts and it sounds like Louis Thoreau. And I was like, yeah. what the fuck? And I, I looked it up and it's the same. It's him. And so what had happened was, and this is how wild, imagine this happening to you, right? Okay. So he's been making documentaries for over 20 something years. And in the early 2000s, he had a documentary series on BBC and only aired in Britain where um, I don't know if every episode he was in America, but he was like he was in, you know doing docs on like one hour episodes on different subcultures. And at least one of them was on American hip. American hip hop at the time, okay. not Juggalo. No, like I, I think I think he was in like New Orleans. I think or it's like Ooh, hell so like yeah, Southern rap. I believe. Yeah, like I think Master P was in that episode. It was like it was like him covering No Limit and shit. I think, but it, either way, it was American. I gotta rap. watch that. It was American rap. An episode he did on it as part of that episode, just as like a fun little thing to do in the episode. He got hooked up with some underground rappers who not they're not people you've heard it wasn't mystical and silk the shocker or nothing like that it was like you know guys i hadn't heard of boy he, he got a good up, time he got hooked up with these underground rappers at the time and they like came up with a little rap together for him to do right as part of the episode and and he did it in the episode and that was it the episode aired 20 years ago no one really cared or whatever like last year or thereabouts, Netflix gets that show as part of their catalog, right? And it goes on Netflix. So some people rediscover it. And everybody's favorite episode, apparently, is the hip hop one. Well, yeah. Okay. So then earlier this year, or maybe late last year, somewhere in there, Louis Throw does a popular British podcast. Don't remember the name of that either, but some big podcast over there. And the host asked him, they're like, you know, your series, whatever it's called, is like, you know, regain some popularity. People have found it because of Netflix, or whatever. And it's like, you know, my favorite part is the rap episode. And I was just wondering, uh, do you remember, do you remember the rap you did on that episode? And he was like, of course I do. And then he just like, and they were like, did you do it? And then he just, 20 years later on this podcast, yeah. he just does the rap, right? Like every bit of it does it. And these online produ these producer guys heard yeah. that podcast, took him doing that <laughs> and they made a lo-fi beat that they put nice. under it and then either sent it to him or put it on tiktok or something it gained a little bit of traction so much so that they had louis throw come in the booth he came in the booth and redid it like for real with their beat and then they put it out on the internet and it went crazy viral on tiktok and stuff and ended up being like one of the biggest rap hits of the summer that but is amazing something that he did as a lark for a right. show he had 20 something years ago right M became like famous this year on tiktok and it's like the internet and pop culture is just just so fucking wild because it like, is can wild you think of a more unlikely no scenario in any regard than that and again like it, it kind of hit it's definitely a novelty yeah. song for sure it's not a club yeah. banger right well but this it's makes like, it's this fun makes... though it's a fun little ditty like i like it <laughs> Well, I know. I'm sure, dude. I mean, the guy hits. And for the record, I want to, A, apologize, and B, say, this makes way more sense than when you first said it, and I thought, like, he had pivoted <laughs> to doing no. rap. You know what I mean? But I go, but it, when you first brought that up, I was like, what the fuck is, I, I said something like, what the fuck is he thinking? And I would just like to say that I now wish that he had actually pivoted to rap. And who the fuck am I to say, what is he doing? Because I am someone who likes to do multiple things aside from the thing that maybe people think is the only thing I should be doing. And I hate it when people put me in a box and I just almost put Louis Thoreau in a box. And I'm so glad uh, to, to hear that his rap hits for you, but that is insane. And that just shows you like, the world we live in today, like that could have never happened really in the nineties. No. Like, like if you, like in the nineties, don't get me wrong, you could discover something from the sixties, but you wouldn't have the uh, resources to then make a lo-fi beat, put it on the internet and do all well, this shit. So like, that's going to be we, happening a lot. Weirdly, the other uh, kind of opposite version of that happened all the time in the nineties actually. But the thing is we never knew it. People never knew Sampling. it. Sampling producers hip-hop producers who knew old shit that white people didn't know about you know right. soul songs and what from the 70s or whatever and not just soul songs but they would sample and some of them were famous and everybody's like that's just under pressure like that right. did happen but dude 
90 plus percent of the hit and rap songs from that era they are sampled and many yep. of those we never even knew that happened or a lot anything. of you can't even but tell for those artists it kind of is a version of what happened to Louis yes. Rose, something 20 plus years later and now they're getting paid for it again and it's relevant again but it's still kind of a bummer because most people have no idea you know but still no, you're right you get a paycheck for it but yeah some yeah. of them some of them did uh there i've seen well, they ended up that, working all that out i'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. they weren't getting paychecks at first but that shit went to court in a big way vanilla ice was part under pressure it was part of it and then ever since then yeah i but, think you know they get money for that but stuff. see on that one that is straight up anyone on earth who heard that could tell this was under pressure i saw this dude i watched like a, a it was a he was doing a reaction video or something to to beats and he showed this thing where like some people that are so good at sampling will sample 0.5 seconds of something and loop it on top of all these other things yeah. to where it makes a completely new beat and you wouldn't know that that 0.5 seconds actually came from like Mavis Staples you know what i mean cuz it's not it's not the whole riff it's just one note and they know how to lay it on top so like all I'm saying is there's definitely a lot of them that got away with it. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so check it out. Jiggle Jiggle by uh, Louis Thoreau and whoever the producers are. But um, the other thing I was going to talk about. Nitty, it wasn't a nitty beat? It was not a nitty beat. DJ <laughs> Mustard was not on the beat either. Young it Metro? a nitty beat. <laughs> Buddy, <laughs> let me tell you something. I some of y'all are too old, and some of y'all may be too young. But whenever you heard back in my day, whenever you heard it's a nitty beat, you uh -huh. knew the club was about to go to a different place, a different ethereal state, and it was going to be fire. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you know, must it on the beat? That also must it on the beat? Yeah, and also, yeah. It, if Young Metro don't trust you, I'm gonna shoot you. I mean, all of these things. <laughs> And then, you know, of course, Lil John would always announce his presence in various ways, all of which hit. Yeah, did hit. So I wasn't thinking about the fact that you were doing medieval torture devices. I just kind of stumbled on this this week and thought it was real, but it's super relevant because it's very similar. I mean, I'm not going to step on your toes with any of this, but like, I don't care. Uh, medieval era things that royals used to subject people to, not just peasants, but also other royals and like, uh, we all know about trial by combat, right? Yeah. Like at least from Game of Thrones, but that was a real thing, right? Which is hilarious. But but having a volunteer, it's it's so funny, and also the fact that you could just be like, you do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Where are you at on trial? And and okay, well, first of all, trial by combat was just one form of a larger custom called trial by ordeal. Well, so right. here's where I'm at on it. If if how they did it in Game of Thrones is how they used to do it and is to be believed, which is like in, in a lot of their minds, trial by combat was like the Lord will yes. make the guilty party known to us. Right. That's and exactly so right. like in that way, I'm like, that's the dumbest. either way. It's dumb as shit. So if it's like that, it's dumb as shit. But if it's the other way and it's just like, no, it's not that, then it's just, you're you could possibly let someone skate just because their tribute hit harder than whoever the fucking DA had as their swordsman. You know what I mean? That's insane. It is insane. The whole thing was insane. Like I said, it's part of a larger custom called trial by ordeal. There were various types of ordeals you could be submitted to and different regions did different things. And only one of them was trial by combat, but all of them had the underlying, uh, you know, framework or assumption of what you just said, where it's like, you know, the Lord will see that the innocent party, you know, proves out in this scenario. <laughs> and like, when you got a trial by combat, it's like, and you then know, someone's that could go die. either way. That could right. go either way, obviously. Right? Like sometimes I'm sure the innocent guy or his champion did win and plenty of other times I'm sure he didn't. And everybody just struck that up to the Lord. But like, that's a 50, 50 shot. But some of these things, dude, but were not, they're very wide ranging. Some of them I'm like, yeah, I'm, shit, I give that one a shot. But then other ones, it's like, <laughs> the fuck are you supposed to do with that? Right. So there was <laughs> trial by fire. Everybody knows, you know, knows the phrase trial by fire, right. but that was, that was a real thing. It took a How few different, forms but it would be something like uh the accused would have to like walk a certain distance like nine hmm. feet over red hot coals right or walk nine feet holding a red hot you know branding iron in their right. hand 
And then when they get done, right, and this also varied, when they get done, in some cases, in some cases, you were only innocent if you had a complete lack of injury. So it's like, <laughs> so no one was miracle. ever innocent, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you'd think at some point they'd be like, damn, every one of these whores is witches. That's kind of wild. Right. You know what I mean? Like, every, with, yeah. like, nobody is not guilty. That's you got to be Khaleesi. Right, yeah. But, uh, and, but other times it was like, You'd have a burn, obviously. They'd wrap it up, and they'd check it three days later. And if it appeared to be healing, that was God intervening on your behalf, and you were innocent. If it was, on the other ha- on the other hand, festering, right, which I'm sure happened all the time, that was God saying, this motherfucker did it. And then you get put to death, right? So you just have third-degree burns and just agony for three days and then get, you know, hung or run <laughs> through or drawn and quartered or whatever, right? But there's stories for every one of these, like this story, there's a story that Edward the Confessor, right, who was the yeah. last uh, Anglo-Saxon king, uh, well, Snitch. his boy Edward Godwin, Harold Godwinson took over briefly before William the, the Conqueror showed up in uh, Battle of Hastings, right? That's but right. Edward the Confessor was the last long-serving Anglo-Saxon king. It said It is said that his mother, uh, Emma of Normandy, was accused of adultery with a bishop, but proved her innocence by walking barefoot, unharmed, over burning coals. So it's like, no, she barely didn't. No, she didn't. didn't. She didn't. Right. right. So where does all this, where, like, somebody also, just lied. You know right. what I mean? Like, so, but then it became, did, 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 like, it was his mom, so maybe he just told everybody she did that? And they were like, well, King said she did it, so she must have done it. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, also, like that's a way that could have come to be. Yeah. Or, you know, but obviously yeah, the king is what they say happened is not what happened. N- right. And you also, like, that. if it's all up to God, then why not just play rock, paper, scissors or whatever their version of it was like horse, sword, you know, mace. I don't know. Like, what would be a medieval? What would they have done for rock, paper, scissors? Horse, sword, mace. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Well, I think um, the mace and the sword both beat the horse, so that's not good. Yeah, right. And that, I'm having that problem with any of them. You know, like you got like boiling oil, lance, yeah. and but you know, again, nothing's going to beat boiling oil. Like we're going to figure this out that? next week for sure. I want to know um, the medieval rock paper scissors. Yeah. So uh, there was. Like I said, this ha- the, another one that was funny, another uh, anecdote I found that was funny about this was during the First Crusades, a French mystic named Peter Bartholomew uh, went through the trial by fire voluntarily, right? <laughs> he volunteered for it because he claimed that he had discovered the Holy Lance, the spear that stabbed Jesus, right? The uh-huh. actual spear that stabbed Jesus. He says, like, this is that shit. I got that shit right here. And everybody's like, no, you don't. (laughs) And he was like, yes, I do. And I'll prove it (laughs) with a trial by fire. Right. right? I'll do the trial by fire. When I uh, emerge unscathed, you will realize that this holy lance is, in fact, the one that pierced our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, uh, he died almost immediately (laughs) as a result of his injuries. And it's like, congratulations, you played yourself. Right. Right. Like. And then they're like, oh, it's just a dumb old regular spear. You can throw it's, that away. It's so funny that his last dumbass thought was, I can't believe it wasn't the spear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, that had to be, if he believes in all that shit, he was like, I've been duped. But listen to this one and tell me what you think about this. I was like, God damn, dude. I, the, the past, man. So there was, in 1498, there was a Dominican friar, right, who uh, claimed That's to have prophetic sandwich. Pe- claimed to have prophetic visions of the apocalypse and shit like that, right? Uh, and he attempted to prove that that was true by also volunteering to undergo a trial by fire, right? But when his got set up to do the trial by fire, all of a sudden, the sky opened up and a tremendous <laughs> rainstorm started mm-hmm. and put out the flames, right? Right. What do you where, where where you go with that? Where's your head go with that? If you witness that, well, if I'm one of these fucktards from the past, I'm gonna go. Well, I guess that uh, it he must be telling the truth because the Lord put out the trial. You know, yeah, 
I'm, I'm with you. No, they said that that was a sign that God was against him, and the Inquisition arrested him after that and convicted him of heresy and hung him until dead. Uh, so, <laughs> being an inquisitor, like, being an inquisitor yeah. had to be the easiest job in the whole world because, like, you like at least like listen. I know cops be making up some bullshit nowadays, but with DNA and forensics and stuff, like, you still got to be pretty good, otherwise you can be proved false. But back then, dude, I mean, you could just say fucking anything as long as you added the lord said it was so and like you're good yeah but also like dude you just can't win with these motherfuckers now on the one hand like we know that that guy wasn't actually seeing visions from god so like he kind of deserved it i guess (laughs) yeah like his whole thing was like i'm gonna prove that i am seeing them and then they were like yeah no that don't hit but still I don't know how you take that any other way than like, oh, the Lord don't want him to, you know, be burned or whatever. But how I many sure of did. these, how many of these cases do you think were just genuine mental illness? Oh, like the vi- people that had visions and shit like yeah. that. I'm sure a bunch of, yeah, I'm sure, dude, a bunch of I'm, them were just literally schizophrenics or whatever. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I didn't know what I'm that sure, was. I also think there was probably an equal amount that were just opportunists. You know yeah. what I mean? A lot of people that go, hey, that this one guy said it and they believed him. What's the difference between me and him? I can just say it and nobody can prove that I didn't see it. So, like, I don't I'm not going to sit here and say that they were all like, woe is them. But like, it's probably split down the middle, schizophrenic fucking uh, narcissist, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's also trial by there's in trial by water. There's two types, hot water, cold water, right? Trial by hot water. Uh is and sometimes it was boiling oil not hot not water oh, but either oh. boiling water or oil to prove your innocence you have to sh- shove your hand into it and retrieve a stone from the bottom of it right <gasps> and depending on what you were accused of it was like wrist deep or elbow deep oh. right and so you had to do that and if you you know uh same thing if three days later if your wound was healing or whatever you got away with it if it wasn't then you were fucked right were they um, doing anything to help heal their wounds? I don't think so. I think they just wrapped it up and said, you know, so go all of God them or whatever. All of them died. You would think. But listen, here's something that occurred to me. Think about this for a second. And I feel like this makes you see how, like, it might be an explanation for some sorcerers and stuff from, like, the past. Like, there's a thing called the, uh, and I'm talking a little bit out of my ass here, but I know for a fact this does exist. There's a thing called the Leiden Frost effect. You ever heard of that? Mm-mm. it's like a reaction in in the world of physics or whatever where like uh basically if you dip your hand in water it's not just a hand this applies to like anything but people there's youtube videos you can look up of people doing it with their hand to prove to show that it works or whatever but i still wouldn't try it you dip your hand in, in water and then immediately into um like fucking molten lead or yeah. boiling oil or whatever and you can do that and pull your hand out and your hand will be completely fine because the, the water protecting it, the water like vaporizes immediately and makes like a protective layer of, of like water vapor that shields your hand from the hot shit. But obviously it, you know, that very limited amount of time, a matter of seconds for that goes away. But my right. point is like, if somebody back then had figured that out somehow or somehow right. knew that or whatever, they could theoretically survive this ordeal yeah. with just like science, but right. but no one's going to understand any of that. So they're just going to think it was they were, you know, blessed by God. So, like, yeah. if you know that, you could do some kind of big crime, right? Yeah. And then get away with it because you like demand trial by boiling oil or whatever, <laughs> and then do that and you're, you know, you're innocent. So, like, you know, could be the perfect crime if somebody figured it out back then. But if they, on the other hand, you know, that's how you get charged with witchcraft and shit yeah. at the same time. Because, again, you can't win with these motherfuckers. But, uh, yeah, and I was about like, to you say, know, you, you do that, and then immediately afterwards, they're like, okay, now we're going to throw you in the woods and light it on fire to see if you can escape that. We want to see how far this goes with you. You know what I mean? But, like, but, right. but honestly, more likely what you said. Like, they'd survive it, and then they'd kick them off a cliff for being a wizard. Right. Then it was Although cold they didn't water. do that. As much. There was no wizard hunts. No, it was- mostly wish hunts. Yeah. <laughs> they wish a dude had powers. Yeah. Uh, then there's trial by cold water, which again, I'm like, th- this still wouldn't hit for me. And there, you need a lot of context here, but basically like they just set you a drink. One of them was just like, they just throw them in a river. 
And if you, <laughs> if you make it out, you're innocent. Yeah. And if you don't, you die, but not always. And there was another one. There's a, a number of these, including like the famous witch hunts that we had, like in Salem yeah. and stuff like that. The scene in Monty Python, the Holy Grail, it's like kind of <laughs> true. But like, yeah. before we get to the witches, another version of it, there was a poacher in the mid, late middle ages, a guy accused of poaching and he was given trial by water. And the way his work was, he was put inside a barrel, right? Oh, and submerged three mm. times in a river or lake or whatever. And if he sank to the bottom, uh -huh. he was innocent. Yeah, yeah. And if he floated, he was guilty. So they'd drag <laughs> him out of there and then throw his ass off a cliff or whatever, right? For being guilty if he survived it. But if he sank, it was like, well, he died a good man, I guess. Right. You know what I mean? It's like the, the Lord shined his light upon him as he drowns horribly in that barrel we put him in. But yeah, it's like, seems a little backwards to me, but that's how they would do with the witches too. Like the, you know, the, the bid in Monty Python is like a real thing. They, you know, same thing with a witch in the water. If she floated, that meant she was a witch because only witches float. Right. right? Yeah. So then they, then she had to be killed. But if she sank, she was innocent. But if she sank, she also died. But at least you die with your soul intact and go to heaven or whatever. But it's just all, you know. Um, silly yeah i was gonna say well, actually i just clean slated myself i was thinking about okay. the, the submerging and the well I, I lost it i had a comment so, and i lost it well but again i said there's like these are a wide range of things and some of them i'm like well that ain't so bad there was another one called and it sounds bad trial by cross trial okay. by the, the the ordeal of the cross okay right? can i guess yeah well Okay, you just said some of them weren't just that bad. It's not that bad, right? Yeah, so yeah. it can't be crucifixion. Um, right. What would trial by the cross? You know, I have no good guess what the fuck that would be if it's not that bad. Because every time the cross is mentioned, that ain't bad. it. It's yeah, usually right. real bad. Yeah, this is very tame by the standards of the cross and the Middle <laughs> Ages, both. But oh, that's what be... I was gonna say earlier. Is like how. Because of the witch and wizard shit, sorry, I just, I feel so bad whenever I have something and then go, oh, buh. how much progress do you think was kept from mankind because every person who was like a scientist got called a witch or wizard and thrown off? Oh, yeah. Like, like oh, how many dude. times did that somebody invent penicillin before our dude invented penicillin and they kicked him off a cliff? Yeah. Yeah, just screamed heresy. And then, yeah, right. You know, okay, the cross, I'm sorry. Feather and, and threw him off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. I mean, you know, it was the fucking dark ages for a reason. You know what yeah. I mean? Like learning wasn't hidden for people and, uh, you know, numbers was evil and stuff. But anyway, trial by cross, early middle ages, somebody was accused. This, and in this one, the accused and the accuser both had to participate. And the way it worked was they get a big cross, big crucifix, and the accused goes on one side and the accuser goes on the other side. And they stand up against it and hold their arms out, Jesus style, mm -hmm. right? And whoever drops their arms first loses. Oh, so like how like, you win a it, car. I was about to say, it's like something from Survivor or <laughs> well, something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not, not that bad. They used to do that, uh, like back in the 70s. Actually, I kind of remember this when I was a kid. Like, uh, there'd be a car dealership and they'd be like, all right, f you know, 50 people get to sign up. And these 50 people come here and everybody puts their hand on this sedan, right? And the last person still yeah. touching the sedan wins. So, like, some people would have to go pee. Some people would have to get back to their family. But that seems like that version. I would definitely take that. I can hold my arms up for a pretty good long time. Yeah. So then there were some other ones like, you know, trial by poison. They'd give them something known to be poisonous. <laughs> and if you puked it up, you were innocent. And if you didn't, you died. Or you were guilty. If you died, you were guilty. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh Trial by poison. I was not expecting that. Just yeah. How, who like how many people puke up poison? You reckon? I I have a feeling that I'd be the guy who, if I drank poison, it just I'd just die from poison. You yeah. know? I mean, yeah. I think a a great many of them did precisely <laughs> yeah. that. Um, but this shit kind of ended earlier than I would have thought it would. I mean, they didn't end entirely. They had their comebacks here and there, but they started falling out of favor in the 1200s, the 13th century, because a Pope, a Pope named Innocent the uh, third. Innocent in 12... was his name. Yeah. There's been a was few. Was his dad Pope Will Innocent. Smith? There's been a few Pope Innocents over the course of history. This was the third and the third Innocent. 
in 1215, he uh, de- he decreed, you know, popes they'd be decreeing. They, they love to they love to decree. Oh, dude. Uh, he decreed that you know he was like, this shit's kind of dumb. You know what I mean? <laughs> or like, I don't I don't think God is making them calls burn that horse feet, right. you know, or whatever. Like, uh, and so he said that it should be a uh, instead it should be um, basically the per- if you're accused, you have to make an oath. That, you know, if you say you didn't do it, you make a solemn oath that you didn't do it. But then you have to get a number of people, usually like 12 people, to like sign off on your Character oath. witness. And, yeah, basically. Yeah. And he was like, this is what we should do instead. Which, you know, beats trial by poison. Yeah. Um, I-, I was going to ask, though, when when did they go, what about trial by trial? You know what I mean? Like, what about yeah. a trial? I mean, you know, I saw that in here somewhere, but as I was reading through it, but I don't remember right now. But you know, years and years later, having uh, having evidence was hard back then. You know what I mean? We yeah. live, dude. We live in the worst time to get away with some shit. You know, for sure. I, like I, I, you know, obviously, for the most part, that's a good thing. You know, uh, for the most part, I I do believe. Hey, if you ain't guilty, you ain't got nothing to worry about. I, do, you know, for the most part, I know that when some people say that, it's, it's, it's. You understand what I'm saying? But like, I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm rewatching Dexter right now. Uh, it's just kind of my don't pay attention. I'll be watching something in case my baby diarrhea is on me, just to have in the background. And I was like, you know, you don't really hear about new serial killers. You know, we've kind of taken that, uh, we've kind of taken that away. Like you can't, and that's well, a good thing, but it's it kind a of a thing. bummer. They, had, they just had a new one this year. That, Get out. Uh, that, yeah, that Long Island feller. Oh, right. How many, what's his body count though? I don't remember. I mean, I think it was pretty good. Or, really? Well, you know. Well, that dude's more uh, impressive than any of the other ones in the past. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's one like when you like when you're ranking like football players or whatever, and you got to put the asterisks by somebody. Like, oh, we got to put the asterisks by Barry Bonds because he was in the steroid era. I feel like if a dude today has four to five bodies, that's equal to twenty in the seventies. You know what I mean? It's a different game. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, but you know, he was killing mostly sex workers and stuff. I mean, tale as old as time, dude. Murderers right. have always known, like, if you're just out just to murder, if you pick sex workers, like, yeah, you'll you're get away with it for longer because people don't, you know, care or right. whatever. And that's what that guy was doing too. I guess just, I guess they, they found the remains of at least 11 people tied him directly wow. to three or four of them or something, but you know, could be more. Dude, he's the goat. He might be the goat, you know? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that's it for trial by ordeal. Let's get into torture stuff. Yeah, let's get into torture stuff. I totally did not have my notes uh, in front of me. Where, where, where the fucking what was the last thing I said? Oh Lord, I don't, I don't was know it, the the Judas thing. Maybe. Yeah, I believe it was the the Judas uh, the the iron chair. I talked about yeah. the yeah. I talked about the iron chair. Okay, so here's one. That is, um, all the ones that we've talked about so far have been pretty gender neutral, fairly progressive ways of torture, you know, non-binary, uh, stretchings and whatnot. This one here, the breast ripper, um, oh God. Th- this, <laughs> this was made pretty specifically, uh, for women and women who were caught, uh, cheating or performing a self-abortion. Um, and of course, blasphemy, or if they were thought to be a witch. And basically what this was, it was a breastplate that had claws in it, kind of like the ones you put on to like shred pork and chicken. You know what I mean? And it would just, it would rip your titties off. Like that was, yeah. Damn, not, bro. not that they couldn't use it on a dude. It's just like, you know, it's right. more of a woman thing. And I would say like, you know, the bigger cans you got, the worse it would probably hurt because they deep it, you know, they're like, get in there more. But like, how was it like powered or whatever? Yeah, I don't know that. Crank, <laughs> I, I, they probably cranked it. Cranked it, yeah. Uh, most of these. Most of them, then most of them old torture things yes. involved some like, you Levy, know, scar-faced or lunatic cranking something. Yeah. While, you know, smiling like, <laughs> <laughs> 
That's yeah. not actually I'm so glad that you brought that up because it's something that I wanted to mention eventually when we were talking about these torture devices. A lot of these actually came around the time of one of you know one of earth's first like mechanical revolutions and like, you know what i'm saying and like it's like as soon as we figured out how to use levers and pulleys immediately someone was like how can we rip this dude's dick off you know what yeah. i mean like like it didn't um, i mean i'm sure that it uh, you know made a, like the wheel you know that was great now the dude who shovels your shit can carry it uh in a wheelbarrow Barrel barrow wheelbarrow yes mm -hmm. yes um, wheelbarrow yeah wheelbarrow I don't like I, it was always wheelbarrow to me as a kid and uh, I that's what I choose you know what I mean you ever just choose something uh, that you know is wrong but you choose it I'm sure I do yeah like I mean, sherbert do you choose sherbert I am yeah um, <laughs> that, not not having it but do you choose to call it sherbert because that's just what you because you know that if you say sherbet that even though you're right you sound like a fucking prick i actually don't think it is sherbet it's uh it's sherbet 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 whatever either way. dude you sound sorbet like more of a prick. sorbet is a different thing. but sherbet yeah. sherbet right but like i know yeah. that it's sherbet i know that it's sherbet but i would never ask any of my friends do you want some sherbet I would say, do you want some Sherbert? Because we grew up calling it fucking Sherbert, and it's Sherbert. That's what I mean by choosing something, like something that, like, you know it's wrong, but it feels right, and you're like, fuck it, it's not against the law. I choose it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I do that. I mean, with so, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not like uh, all, you know, it's but all. that's like, is that the same thing? That's kind no, of just like, no, that pisses me off. I'm not changing off. the letters and the word. No, it's that's just, that's, that's just, just pronunciation. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's an accent. You're like, like you're modifying the words themselves. That's always pissed me off. Like that's always pissed me off when people are like, you say that wrong. And it's like, no, I don't. My accent makes it sound different. I'm saying it the way you're saying it, but how it comes out of my mouth is different because this is the way I fucking talk. Right? Like like I remember like my mom, dude, my mom, you know my mom a scary bitch, right? Like one of the, I love her. I love her. I love her to death. But like, and I didn't even know this, by the way, like she didn't ever really scare me that much, but all my friends are like frightened of her. They're like, oh, I would, you know, I'll whoop your dad's fucking ass, but I ain't going to cross. Sorry, BPP. I'll whoop your dad's fucking, I'll throw a honey bun at him and he'll, you know, leave or whatever. But your mom, that bitch has, people used to always be like, she's throwing people in the wood chipper. You know what I mean? Well, like yeah. when, when we were kids, um, and Amber still talks about this to this day, who my mom is now obviously her mother-in-law. So there's a whole nother dynamic there. But when they were kids, right, Amber's family is from Iowa. And so when Amber was a kid, she like she spoke like how her parents spoke. And you know what I mean? Like she wasn't around like she had to be around a bunch of Southern people before the Southern accent really took hold. And it still hasn't. She still kind of sounds Iwegian. And so <laughs> she she does, and which is fine. Um, but she um pronounced Laura, which is my mom's name, Laura. That's just how I would say it. And one Laura? time I mean, Laura. I also would say Laura. I yeah, think. Okay, thank you. That's just a pronunciation. And one Wait time, your mom, her name has a U in it, don't it? Yeah, but she, it's, it's Laura. Not Lara. It, no, it's not Lara. It's Laura, not Laura. Laura. Yeah, I know. What? I, I'm, I'm with I can't you. Even hear the Laura. I, right, right. Okay. It's not that big of a deal. But one time, apparently, Amber said Miss Laura, and my mom goes, "It's Laura," and like stared it's at her. Laura. Yeah, okay. and like, and I and I've always just thought about that, like, but it's also Laura. That's just how, like, that's how someone from New York would say, it. "Yo, Laura." You know what I mean? So it's not wrong. It's just how it it comes out. But we get in trouble for it with tire and oil and uh, fucking you know whole lots of other shit. But it doesn't mean it's. How did we get here, man? Oh, you. This <laughs> is so. <laughs> You <laughs> mentioned wheelbarrows, <laughs> and then we're like, you know what? I call them wheelbarrows because fuck it, I don't give a shit. You ever do that? What about Sherbert? You say Sherbet? No, it's Sherbert. I wouldn't call my, I wouldn't call it Sherbert to my buddies. They'd be like, shut up, queer. Anyway, my mom was crazy as hell, and she told my wife once, don't you say my fucking name like that? And, and you know, 
anyway, here we are. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So that was the breast ripper. Now we have the breaking wheel slash the Catherine wheel. Um, it's also called the Catherine wheel because it was used by Emperor Maxent- Maxentius. Uh, in- Let me ask you. M-A-X-E-N-T-I-U-S. Maxentius? Yeah, Ma- yeah, Maxentius, yeah. Emperor I mean, Maxentius to torture St. Catherine. Uh, she was tortured for being a Christian in Egypt because they, like, that wasn't it. No, right. that didn't hit for them. You know, they were like, it cast, also didn't hit for them to be ones. Jews, right? No, in Egypt, didn't. Yeah. hell no. Very famously. Like, yeah. No, you either be someone who stares at gold cats or we're going to fucking put you in a tomb. That's how Egypt rolled. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know how Egypt be now. I know they're fine. You know, I love all our Egyptian fans. I haven't ca- kept up with them since Gaddafi, I guess. Was he them? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he hit for them or something. So anyways, uh, I, mean, I so, don't know what they're up to either. Um, yeah, but they're fine, I guess. Yeah. But it didn't used to hit to be Christ there. There was a moment in time. I'll give him, I'll give him this. There was a moment in time where being a Christian wasn't the best thing you could be, but that moment has fucking passed. All right. So anyways, uh, this was a big ass wagon wheel and it was sort of set up like a wheel that you'd spin on a game show, like prices yeah. right or something, you know, right. and not, not the, uh, not the big wheel. Cause you know, Bob and then they would spin it and it would like come at them this way. More like how, uh, was it Plinko one that it goes, Oh, uh, fucking, uh, 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 um, what's the one with words? Uh, the, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I get what you're saying. It's a wheel that faces you and spins. Yeah. Yes. Like wheel of fortune. Face- yeah, yeah. Wheel of fortune. Right. Right, except for right. tilted up, kind of <laughs> like, kind of yes. like a carnival. I totally understand. I, I know you do, Trey. You're does. smart. <laughs> Fuck you. I know that you get it, but it's for people like me <laughs> who aren't the ones explaining. You know what I'm saying? There's someone out there like me that doesn't have this information and they need it laid out exactly like I'm laying it out. Anyways, I think that they made it uh, all fun like that, uh, in my opinion, because this was a very popular form of public torture and death. Not that not that it was the only one. I know they liked doing that, but this was like a real fucking ticket mover. You know what I mean? People were like, oh, they're going to spin the wheel and put the bitch on it. All right. Uh, so they wanted to put on show, you know, uh, that by the way, is one of the things that made me think of your faces of death thing that like, I was like, God damn, how could people, you know, when we were, you were describing the videos, I was like, God damn, how could people be into that shit? And it's like, bruh, back in the day, everyone was into that shit. Like, yeah, that shit was and, HBO back it then. Was, it was. And yeah, I, Sunday night, primetime entertainment, get the family together, go down there and, you know. Hurl cabbages at the pheasant thief before they yeah. hang him, you know? And I'd, I'd kind of like to talk philosophically about that for a second, if you don't mind, because, like, I, I can't decide how many of those people, like, how many of those people were the type that were like, this is my shit. Like, they're the ones that are rock hard watching someone get stoned to death. And how many of the people were like, well, there's nothing else on, you know? Right. Or how I always kind of lean towards the second one for whatever reason. It's just like, it's just what you did kind of thing. Yeah. But, but they did seem to get into it for sure. If any if modern depictions are any indication, they really love throwing them maters at the, <laughs> you know, at their faces and whatnot. And it's like, dude, maters were not easy to come by back then. No, either. that was you know a lot I mean? of money. Yeah. To throw a mater at a person. Like yeah. I was actually reading you today. To be pretty pissed off. I'm I'm reading I'm reading a uh, a book called The Secret Lives of the uh The Secret Lives of Women during the Tudor era or whatever. Um okay. obviously for well for the show, you know what I mean? I just I try to pick a uh sort of academic book to always be nibbling a little bit of my way through to get some ideas. And um I think it was like, you know, during the Tudor era, Tudor era, which is a little bit later than this, but like um food made up like 87 percent of your yearly money uh just because food costs could be you know relatively high if you weren't someone that was farming and i say all this to say that like 
anybody can throw it. Well, not anybody, but like I could throw some fucking tomatoes at a person and be fine. You know what I mean? I've, I could, I not to brag, but like I could afford to hit you in the fucking face with a tomato. But back yeah. then, back then you really had to hate a motherfucker to right. waste a tomato. Disgusted. Or maybe, you know, if it was That's a really benevolent saying. Lord, he would pass out maters for the townsfolk, you know, something for the kids <laughs> right. to do. You know what I mean? So my point is, let's break all these people down. Well, just go with me for a second. Everyone in the crowd is not the same. We, I think in our minds, we, we think of everyone in the crowd as the person who's like, I want to throw a tomato at this bitch, right? But you've got those for sure. Then you've got the people who are like, like I said, there's nothing else on, right? Then you've probably got the people who are like, I don't want to not be seen at this because then everybody will be like, why wasn't? Gary yeah. at the, yeah. the you got a problem with throwing miters exactly Gary, are you sudden? guilty of something but exactly. then also a fourth person potentially this had to exist because it's not like queers were born yesterday uh there had to be people there that were protesting you know what I'm saying and like I don't know man you think so because of what we just said it's they like, would get killed immediately you could, I'm about to say you couldn't protest and I feel like they couldn't really do that back then. I mean, no, they had, you'd they have to protest do it twice. in like, they you'd couldn't have to do protest it twice. by like surreptitiously setting something on fire and leaving a message or something like that. But like, if you're just protesting out in the open, you yeah, know, no, I think get, they got you killed. Tarred, tarred and feathered. You know? I think that they did, though. That's what I'm saying is like, you say you can't protest, I say you can't protest twice. You know what I mean? I do think yeah, that, but that there makes w- the stakes really high, which yeah. means that I feel like it'd be way fewer people who'd be willing to roll them dice. I, would I agree, think. but that makes the further up your butt you can be. There were definitely some people who were like, I can't wait to be a martyr for, you know, whatever the fuck. Because, dude, as we've pointed out in your trial buys and my torture stuff, we got all these people who are disgusted by this. But we know that so many innocent people are getting put on this fucking wheel. You know what I mean? Now, granted, the way that information traveled back then, I would say most of the peasants, if they saw you on the wheel, they just go, well, they did it because they're on the wheel. You know what I mean? So basically what they do on this wheel is they'd strap you to it uh, and they'd spin you around like in a game show. And as you were coming around, they would have like all those different, you know, the dudes from the <laughs> with clubs and a mask over their fucking head. And they would like take turns. Like it was like baseball and you were the ball coming around. They just take turns fucking whacking at you. But the way that they had this, you set up, like the only thing holding you up was like one stick. Right. So all your limbs are flailing about. So every time they hit you, we're talking your bones fucking shatter. Right. It's not like them just strapping you to a board and beating you, which don't get me wrong, would not hit. But like they hit your arm, your arm snaps in half. Right. And that was the deal is that they they wouldn't beat them. I mean, sometimes they would whip them to death, but that's only because you don't know. They weren't trying to whoop them to death. It's just sometimes you accidentally whoop someone to death when you're not trying to whoop them to death. Because what they wanted to do was just whoop them. I won't even say almost to death. Almost to death. Yeah. And then how they died was they would just leave them there on the wheel and they literally can't move. And so they would die by starving or thirsting to death while all the people would come back to, I don't know, eat eat leftover tomatoes off their shoes. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that's a pretty rough one. You know, remember I I mentioned last week that I kind of wanted to um, talk about, or maybe when we get to the end here, rank which ones we definitely wouldn't want and uh, talk about the one that if we had to, I'd go for that. I haven't found one yet that I was like, if I had to, I'd, I'd go for that. But I think this next one, um, I think this next one might be the one that I go anything but that. Okay. Oh, God. Now, I didn't even have to look this up. Um, I mean, I ended up doing it just to make sure it was true, but I knew that it was true. But I thought of this because of Game of Thrones, and I first saw it on Game of Thrones, and it's rat torture. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean by rat torture? Yeah, I first saw that in, uh, I think it's in a, damn, what is that? Is that in a Fast and Furious movie or something like? I've only seen the first two. 
And the one right it, after Paul Walker died. There's definitely so you know Batman Begins, the dirty cop in Batman Begins. That, yeah, like he's that like he sort of looks like Dan Fogler. He's got like the yeah, long yeah. greasy hair, like a little fat, like yeah. that dude. He was a character actor in a bunch of shit. That guy gets it done to him in some crime movie that I watched, and that was the first time I ever saw it. And I was like, dude, that shit is fucked up. And then yeah, they did it in Game of Thrones and whatnot later. But yeah, yeah so that, to all that of you. It. So to all of you that don't watch Game of Thrones and don't know what I mean by rat torture, this is particularly fucked up because, I mean, it's a real slow burn. And also you're dealing, it's not only that, but you've, you've introduced a, a fucking creature, you know, which a, a rat, which no one wants to be around a rat. So what they would do was they would get a rat and put a rat in a metal bucket uh, which the metal bucket was very important, I think, because if it wasn't, if it was wood, the rat may choose to eat its way out that way. But with metal, it would be like, oh, no, can't do it. They would strap this bucket to your chest and put a rat in it. And then, oh, no. And then, then they would light it. It was metal because of the lighting on fire. That's what it was. Yeah, they would right. they would light fire to the end so the rat wouldn't go towards that end. And it would go towards your chest. And the right. rat would slowly eat through your chest cavity. And yeah, then ostensibly through your heart, and I mean, eventually, depending on how long they left it there, through your back, and it would you would die that way. So, how like imagine? I would say like your chest bone, that's hard to gnaw through. I'd say, you know, this took yeah, a if you fucking, go up and under it. You yeah, know? yeah. Like you got, they go through the belly, and then up and under the chest bone, get back in there. Yeah, but it's strapped to the chest that. for that reason. They can't, like, they're going through here. That's what I thought. Like, the metal bucket was here for a reason, so they couldn't go under the belly. It depends on, I don't know, it just it all depends on where the bucket is. In the either in the way. First, in the first time I ever saw it, and I do actually, I think it was Too Fast, Too Furious, I think. Really? And I don't remember that? Because I saw was Too in, Fast, Too Furious. I mean, the guy, it was definitely the guy I'm talking about whose character had it done to him, definitely. And he was, and I, my first thought was Fast and Furious movie, and that guy was in Too Fast, Too Furious. So I think that's what it was. He, uh, it, they don't go all the way through with it in that movie. They just right. set it up, like, and make well, you realize what it's going to be. And then when did he, Too Fast, Too Furious? Or whatever. 2003, when, I think it was. Uh, oh, yeah. I was on pills. I would have saw that movie on pills. Uh, I definitely would have saw that movie because of Ludacris. Uh, yeah, and because the, the, the tie the tie in rap, you know, had me in a stranglehold, loved it so mm -hmm. much. Uh, but I was I was taking a lot of pills back then, so I wouldn't have remembered the rat torture. Um, but anyways, yeah, like I, regardless of it going through your belly or whatever, like this is going to take a long time. And the whole time you're like very cognizant of the fact that a rat is chewing through your fucking like I would talk so quick. You know what I mean? Like, how how well do you think you would do being tortured? Not not none at all. Like, I'd yeah, give it up I'm, immediately. I guarantee me too. it. Like, I mean, I think if it was like meant the life the life of someone I like loved, yes, that's different. Then for my son, I would just get what tortured. I would be doing is I would be making shit up from the yeah. jump. Yeah, which like that's the whole reason that torture like doesn't actually work for the most right. part is because people do, and that's exactly what I do. As soon as it starts, I'll say like, anything. Whatever you want to know, and then I'd just be saying a bunch of bullshit that isn't true right. or whatever. Uh, but if it was like, I don't know, get yeah, I, I mean that's probably how I would react either way. But I'd start saying something immediately. Yes. Like, immediately. I would not be sitting there like you know, you know I'll never talk. I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> I'd be talking. I'd just be trying to lie at first to protect whoever but yeah have you ever heard a friend of the show ryan darling's bit about his grandfather in world war ii yes yeah <laughs> so, but i can't remember it i'm gonna I butcher the bit but oh, the, con so, the yeah, concept anyway, is ahead. so goddamn funny where it's like his grandfather used to always tell him this story about how he was in a group of 12 men and they all got caught and he's the only one that made it out of right. life. And he's like, when I was a kid, that was the coolest shit ever. And then I got older and I was like, Oh my God, my grandpa's a snitch. snitch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, but I'm, I'm the same way. I'm like Bernie Mac in that bit. I'm just like, Hey, Hey, mm -hmm. <laughs> he fucking tell me I would. And it's so funny too, because, and I think that maybe before I had a kid, you know, me and you've talked a lot about how having a kid ruins your suicidal fantasies. Um, not to get dark, but, and not that I ever would kill myself, but it was always a comfort to know that that was on the table. You know what I mean? Knowing that's on the table, 
helps you through a lot of shit. You're like, hey, if it gets too rough, I'll just jump out of this fucking car. Yeah, see, when you're, and it, you may have not felt like that, but you know, I've talked, I've talked a lot before about how when I was in my, or my early twenties and shit, my later twenties was tough for me because I had to realize I wasn't this like prodigious virtuoso that I thought I was when I was younger. Oh, you got over uh, that? Well, you know, but better than it was, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I hit just fine, but I used to think I really hit. And anyway, when, and I had kids young. So when you go straight from being that dude to having children, I'm saying I never really had a period in my life where I, uh, where I got to enjoy that is what I'm saying. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Right. You had kids young. I enjoyed it for a long fucking time. You when know, you're in your early twenties, you think you're going to live forever. You know what That's I mean? That's true. Like, but also again, having it on the table that like, I, you know, there is a way out. Uh, my point is, yeah, now if someone was torturing me and the information they needed would compromise my son, yeah, I would, right, I, yeah. yeah, um, but dude, if they was torturing me for some amber shit, fuck it, hey, <laughs> that bitch, that bitch stay over there, that's where she stay, <laughs> tell her I said what's up, oh, uh, you know, I mean, you know, like, I don't love her the same, it's different. Right. Like, it's funny, too, because uh, we were talking about that with, like, uh, me and Amber were talking about the kid. I was like, you know, it's wild that, like, you know, having having this thing that, like, I and I meant this in a good way. I was like, I was like, I only thought that I loved you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now we've got this. And she Amber said something about, like, well, that's the, be you know, the beauty of marriage is, like, loving someone unconditionally. And I was like, wait, what? And she goes, yeah, you know, <laughs> marriage, you love someone unconditionally. I was like, bitch. We yeah. both have so many yeah, but, conditions. Yeah, but like, I got some terms. Okay, <laughs> yeah. like, I know you didn't read them all because it's like the Apple fucking agreement yeah. or whatever. But like, there's plenty of terms in here. But with the kid, absolutely zero terms. You know, zero terms whatsoever. Like, you know, now when I'm watching, um, like, uh, uh, Dexter, like I was saying, you know, and they're talking about like, if your kid was a serial killer, would you turn him in? I'm like, absolutely not. I'd be chopping them motherfuckers up with him. If that's what he needed to do, <laughs> you know what I mean? I just want him to be happy. Uh, any fucking ways. The last one we have here, uh, this is, this is the one that we actually have mentioned a little bit on the show, but I believe it was in like episode five. So a long time ago, and it was merely a footnote, but you'll remember it when I bring it up. It's the brazen bull. Do you remember the brazen bull? If this didn't come up, I was going to bring it up. Uh, yeah. I said yeah. it specifically for last because I knew that if I brought it up first, you'd be like, we done talked about this. But yeah, so. Well, you talk uh, about congratulations. You played yourself. Uh, dude, this. 100%. This is so, like the number one instance of that in all of history, pretty much. <laughs> absolutely. And like I said, some airheads that have a good memory are like, I remember this. But for those of you that don't and for those of you that need a little refresher and a little more information on it, this, uh, the brazen bull was made by a dude in ancient Greece, right? And it was literally in the shape of a bull. The bull was said to be hollow and made entirely out of bronze with a door uh, on one side. According to legends, the brazen bull was designed in the form and size of an actual bull, like I said, and had this acoustic apparatus that converted the screams into the sounds of a bull. I don't know if I brought that fucking part up, but like, yeah, wh whoever did this was also like an audio technician that was like, okay, if we put this yeah. hollow point here, how well do you think that that part worked? Like, how functional Not do good. you think? Yeah, right. It, it was probably just a blood curdling, it, it, you it, know, it, hellish it howl yeah. from beyond the pale. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know if it was like, damn, that's some good foley there. Sounds just like a, you know, snorting bull or, or whatever screaming say, bull the bull you know what like yeah i would say to that, sound like a bull right yeah i would say but that they, what happened was it was like the same way that they would make the baritone on a tuba you know like whatever size the hole needs to be for like that specific noise and then basically all it was is that their screams got deeper and that sounds like a bull you know what i mean because it's not like you can turn the words oh Right into uh, right. Yeah. Also, like that don't even really hit. Do you know what I mean? It's like I'd rather hear him say "fuck." You want it to be blood curdling if you're yeah, in right. the torture implement game, right? So why would you want it to replicate the sound of a bull just mooing or whatever the fuck? You know what I mean? So I like, agree. Yeah, I I too think that this feller uh, did too much. Uh, in my I'm opinion, sure it sounded wild as fuck. Yeah. You know, whatever it was. 
So but anyway, yeah. The condemned were locked inside the device, and a fire was set under it, heating the metal until the person inside was roasted to death. Uh, that's mm -hmm. how that would work. So this was a favorite um, of the tyrant uh, Phalaris. Do you know Phalaris? Not familiar with Phalaris. So, work, Phal no. so Phalaris was alleged to have been a uh, a cannibal. Uh, particularly what he really enjoyed eating was newborn babies. Like the newer the born, Good Lord. the better. Yeah. So he's like, you know, he's what a lot of people think Democrats are. <laughs> and just yeah. eating babies, getting yeah. their adrenochrome or yeah. whatever. Hillary Clinton's great, 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 great grandpa. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, he was just this lunatic madman that I guess like he was like a contractor Right. Like he he like was like an old school, like made buildings or whatever. And he had to be a good one because like they entrusted him with building the Temple of Zeus. The Greeks entrusted him with building the Temple of Zeus, like their biggest God ever. Right. So he builds the Temple of Zeus. And then after he gets done building the Temple of Zeus, he just goes and sits on the throne. And it was like, all right, I'm I'm the guy now. I'm the ruler. And he had enough people like on his team that they were just like, yeah. So he just like, he, he was commissioned by the rulers to make this thing, made it. And then was like, all right, get the fuck out. I'm the, I'm the ruler now. Right. So legend has it that this dude uh, named perilous. Uh, this isn't the guy, the, 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 uh, the uh, Phalaris was the guy who loved the brazen bull, not the one who invented it. So right. legend, legend has it that a dude named perilous, which I think, nominative determinism for sure he, th this dude named perilous invented it and pitched it to phalaris and phalaris was like i love it now get your ass in it right right that so that's how Which that's how i that always heard out. i had heard i'm not saying i had always heard that the guy that told him to get in it I, i'd heard that it was because but obviously that dude's a fucking sick fuck is eating babies and shit and i get why the bull hit for him but i i heard the story is like the whoever the ruler was this dude brings it in. He's like, hey, check out my bull. And the guy was like, right. yeah, that's wild. Look, I'll give you that. But anybody who would build something like that is a demented motherfucker. So I'm going to need you to get in that and cook yourself to death. That's how I like said out it. Of, out of like justice. Yeah, that's how I said it the first time I told the story. Um, and that's because I read it somewhere. But now reading this, I'm I'm like. I don't know if that's true. Right? That makes it sound like the guy just did it just because he likes burning people alive yes. and is going to eat this motherfucker. I agree. You know, it doesn't make it sound like there's any kind of like, you know, twisted sense of justice involved or something, which is how I had always heard the story Me too. before. And like um, I said, that's how I told the story. And I wouldn't, I'm not smart enough to have made that up. You know what I mean? And that's like, oh, I mean, I'd heard of, I, that's like, before we even talked about it the first time, like I, that's, uh, you know, that's like, I don't remember where I first saw it or heard it on the internet, but that was like something you, that I feel like that sticks with you. And I yeah, first heard that like years ago. And I'd always heard the version where the ruler was like, this is way too fucked up, dude. I'm going to have to burn you alive for even thinking of some sick shit like that. Um, but at, all these things are like, you know, who knows if any of that literally That's, happened at all. Like, no, you know, I know. With all this ancient history stuff, you never know. Well, that's um, what I wanted to point out. Cause like when I read this, and I went back and looked at that. I was like, that is completely seemingly the opposite of what I first was led to believe about the brazen bull. But on both in on both accounts, I read them both on reputable websites. So like, once again, I just got to say to the POA nation, if I get something wrong, get off my fucking ass. Because oftentimes that means that I, someone got it wrong and I read that shit. Or you don't know what the fuck you're talking about either. All this it crazy. It could just be too... There could be multiple conflicting reports from different right. ancient Greek historians on this one story, so nobody knows for sure which one actually happened. But uh, fucked up question. But like, if person's in the brazen bull and they're getting roasted, like, you think that smells good? Yeah, like, for a minute, it probably does. Don't for a minute like, it's until real it fucked gets up down. To think about, but like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's roasting meat. You know well, what I'm saying? And like, if you were real hungry and you smelled that. Now the hair It'd be a weird moment, you know. The hair would smell bad, but once the hair was singed off, yes, I believe that would smell good. I mean, me and you have talked many a times about which one of us uh would hit to eat. And um yeah. but I do I mean, dude, why like at the end of the day, if you took a human thigh 
like in, in terms of like the muscle to fat ratio or whatever i mean it's still meat <laughs> like it's still fucking meat so like why would you expect that to smell bad but a cow to because dude burning cow oh oh lord i love yeah. the smell of burning cow i guarantee you now like i said if it's the flesh i think the immediate singe of the hair is going to be because for some reason burnt hair smells horrible but yeah dude i genuinely think that it would smell like a pot of stew yeah uh so is that the is that the, the is that the list that's the list. That the last one that is the so, list i've got some really some, good air mails but uh, i'd love to continue this conversation if you're in well, i just want to do a couple real quick ones that i yeah. was wondering if they were going to come up throughout the things one because like i told you i did a paper on these when i was in college yeah. and one some that i can remember you went to college I the paper, but i heard them i heard them around somewhere along the way uh there's obviously there's the rack the torture rack right Lex Luger. You get stretched out, mm -hmm. right? You just put somebody on it, stretch them, which don't hit. Um, there's uh, this thing, I believe it was called the pear, which is uh, way too I, cutesy of a name for what this I, was. It I was read a, about that and decided, uh, the only reason I decided not to share it is because I already had so many shoving things up in people. Yeah. But go ahead. No, no, yeah. please go ahead. It's a little device, pear-shaped device that goes up either a, a noose or a vagine, right? Yeah. It goes up in there and then gets cranked again. They love cranking shit. They love it. Gets cranked open and just disembowels you and shreds your innards. There's uh, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but there's they do it with uh, stones. Um, there's this famous story during the witch trials. A man, one of the few men who got killed during the witch trials. I don't remember what his crime was. He was hot covering up for a witch or something like that. He was an old feller. And, but this is the thing they used to do. They put a big, big piece of wood. You lay on the ground and put a big piece of wood on you. And then they put a rock on top of it. And then they put another rock on top of it. Slowly. And they keep putting rocks on top of it. And they, and they're, you're trying to get you to confess or whatever, you know, and, but this old boy, the only words he said reportedly was more weight. He kept just nice. saying more weight until they crushed him to death. Uh, so, that was one um and then there's you know obviously the water tor chinese water torture yeah or whatever it. uh oh and then that's this just one, the I guess, slow is drop right the chinese yeah, water torture is just the slow drop right which would eventually you know erode into your brain well no, i think it, you're in a tub so uh, it takes a long time but eventually it drowns you, you know it'll, it'll get up to here and it's still one drop at a time i mean dude it would drive you fucking crazy and then uh this one, I guess, is apocryphal. It's not, I guess it's not, wasn't ever really a real thing, but another classic of the genre is the Iron Maiden, um, which I guess didn't really exist. But you know what the Iron Maiden is? The um, great band. Right. Yeah. So many the of these are great after. bands, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah. Metal bands love this shit. Uh, Iron Maiden is the, it's like a person shaped sarcophagus that's with spikes. Uh, Lined with spikes on the inside. You put yeah. spikes in it and then close it up. Yeah. I think that yeah. was a, uh, that was the, the iron chair was very similar to that, you know, uh, but I think that the Iron Maiden was probably an evolution of that where they were like, oh, what well, if again, we had them stand up? I guess up? it's sort of like, uh, it, apparently they weren't even really real. I, I don't know if they got invented for like a story and became a thing. People made them as like novelty items or whatever but uh, evidently they weren't ever really actually used they're kind of not even a real thing iron maidens i feel like that I could be, tr that more, be true for several remember. of the ones that i mentioned too because like yeah yeah this is like it's not pre it's it's not before recorded history but like like we said like so many of that stuff it literally like some like the fucking john grisham of that time could have written a story and invented one of these and then once it got passed down and you don't have the original whatever, somebody's like, yeah, they used to do that. You know what I mean? Like, it easily could have happened. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I feel like I thought of a couple more, but I can't remember them now. So, yeah, I let's got do one. it, airmail. Well, no, I got one for you that uh, my buddy Chris actually thought of when we were children. Um, okay. And the reason that it, the pair is very similar to this um, I remember we were. Oh, in like, I remembered another one. Go ahead. We were in. Like, oh, good. I can't wait. We were in like fucking fifth grade. I don't know why, Chris. I'm not going to say his last name just in case. Uh, but I don't know why Chris thought of this. But he was like, you know, it'd be a fucking gnarly way to like torture someone. And I was like, what? And he goes, all right. So you take a piece of PVC pipe, right? 
I was like, all right. And he goes, and in the PVC pipe, you put a long strand of barbed wire, okay? And then you lube up the PVC pipe and you shove it up someone's ass. And then you remove the PVC pipe because like threading mm. barbed wire in someone's Ugh. ass would be hard, but threading the yeah. PVC pipe up there wouldn't. And now they have to rip the barbed wire Ugh, out of their fuck, own asshole. Oh, he thought God, of this in fifth hit. fucking grade, dude. Fifth fucking yeah. grade. So my point is like, I've told a bunch of people that, well, one day in the year 3000, they could go, man, you know how they used to torture people back in 2003? They used to fucking shove barbed wire up their ass. The other one I remember, don't know if it's real or not. This is another uh, East Asian torture device, I reckon. They're, you know, bamboo, certain uh, types of bamboo especially grow crazy or grows crazy fast, right? Yeah, like we crazy had bamboo fast. at our old golf course, and we so used to like, run through it and beat each other with it. And uh, so what they would do is they would suspend somebody laid out horizontally, like held up by ropes or something over a patch, a very Ooh. thick patch of bamboo. And then they would, they Ooh. would, they would uh, carve the tips of the bamboo into Ooh. points and then they just leave them there. And, you know, it took a few days or whatever, yeah. however, however long, but it grew, it would grow up through you. Oh. So that's that ain't uh, it. pretty fucked up. Again, don't know if that one's real either. It's just one that I've heard of along the way. But anyway. Airmail. Airmail. Lighten the mood. Yeah. Airheads. Yeah, here's one to lighten the mood. Subject line, how, and in all caps, fucking dare you. <laughs> oh, God. Dear Trey and Corey, both spelled wrong, by the way. Um, dear Trey and Corey, I have a weekly tradition wherein I walk my dog on Saturday mornings and listen to the newest episode of Putting On Airs. By the way, thank you for that. Uh, it's a great way to start the weekend, and you two always put a smile on my face. Until today, <laughs> the discourse about chat rooms and cyber sex gave me Vietnam vet esque thousand yard stare style <laughs> flashback as I was brought to the devastating realization of just how many 50 year old basement dwelling men I had helped nut during my yeah. supremely horny adolescence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, too, was all about those chat rooms, and as a kid who was very into reading and writing, my cyber sex sessions were very graphic, very detailed, and very elaborate, so I'm sure I was giving out some high-quality orgasms to the aspiring kitty diddlers of the mid-2000s. This is going to live rent-free in my head forever now because of the <laughs> two of you bastards, so goddamn you both to hell. But, but in all seriousness, you guys rock. I grew up Republican in a very red small town in Connecticut, uh, not golf and yacht club, Connecticut. Think cornfields and opi opioid crisis before it was cool, Connecticut. Okay, right on. We see you. Um, but now I'm a liberal yuppie who willingly eats kale and donates to PBS. So you guys are a great way to feel connected to my roots. Also, Corey's story about almost fucking his cousin uh, was the first thing to make me laugh two years ago when my grandmother passed. I'm, that means a lot to me, for real. <laughs> uh, love y'all like chicken. Travis, P.S., speaking of my hometown, it has a fun and quirky local legend from the 1700s known as the Battle of the Frogs that might be a fun bit for history with Professor Cho. Check it out. I totally shall. Thank you, Travis. Uh, that was great. Subject. <laughs> this motherfucker. You... No one has ever gone, no one has ever sent an email with more confidence that it was going to get read than this person who just sent this. <laughs> Subject line, suggestions for Trey, parentheses, Corey, sweetie, keep up the good work. You're perfect as is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Greetings from the frozen north. My name is Emily. Say it, don't spray it. And I've been a fan of the extended skew universe for quite some time now, but I've got a few ideas for Trey's Venn diagram, which I have been sorely missing. Uh, a little background about myself. As a poor, definitively non-heterosexual black and Italian Jewess who has roots in Appalachia with the awkward flustered crushes on very attractive cousins to prove it and lives in a crime-ridden Rust Belt too small town in upstate New York, I proudly identify as light beige trash. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Love it. Here's your first suggestion. 
Court dates, whether it's because both uncle and cousin Kenny are well known to law enforcement and the local magistrate, the merger slash acquisition is tied up in seemingly endless, endless litigation, or cousin Muffy is fighting being left out of Nana's inheritance, it seems those at either end of the wealth spectrum spend more time in court than the middle class people do. Agreed. Second one, free shit. You can be stuffing your pockets with McDonald's napkins and curb shopping for furniture or hoarding $10,000 plus swag bag from an Oscars party, but very few things unite trash and fancy folks like getting shit for free. Mushrooms. Be it foraging for morals come springtime and or adding a can of cream of mushroom soup to every casserole within a five mile radius, trash have an affinity for fungi. So too do the wealthy folk who are willing to shell out hundreds upon hundreds of dollars for a few precious grams of truffles, nosed out by a goddamn pig. Overdressing. This is, you know what? I'm not going to read all of this because I'm going to send them to you because they're great. I, I'm only saying that, uh, Emily because all of your suggestions are wonderful and we don't want to give all of them away, but you have sent a fucking wonderful email with the best subject line I've ever heard. Uh, matter of fact, Trey, I'm forwarding this to you right this very fucking second. No, I'm not. My phone doesn't work. I'll do it in a second. Okay. Last, last email here. Subject line, comedic heroes, Austin powers, James Coburn asking for a friend. Uh, Hey, y'all, I'm considering endeavoring into the odd and scary world of stand-up comedy. I was hoping that you could give a little tidbit of advice to an aging novice. I have no problems with crowds, as I have been a frontman for bands for more than 20 years. I also know how to work a crowd, as I was a bartender for many years as well. My issue isn't even material. I just can't seem to remember my lines when I try my set out on Friends. Also, any advice on where slash how to start out? Okay, after that, he gives us a show idea. Do you want to take this real quick and, and give some advice? Uh, I know mine. I mean, if you've been a front man, if you've been doing the little quippy banter shit in between songs that some front men do, then, you know, you've actually probably got more practice than you think, in my opinion. It's not the same Agreed. thing. That the st the uh, context and stakes are very different. They're kind of in your favor, in my opinion. People are watching a band. They're not expecting humor. And so when you're funny, it's a nice surprise. When you yeah. go to a comedy Todd's club, Snyder, the expectations are very different. Uh, but still, you're in a much you're in an advantageous position compared to most people who are just trying to start out and stand up. You kind of have some pseudo stand up experience already, which will behoove, behoove you greatly. And the only real, only real advice I ever have or that I think anybody can give is just, you just have to go and do, do it. it and then just keep doing it. There's no other, it's very simple and you know, not sexy advice, but it's just the truth as far as where to go. I mean, if you get wherever, whatever city you live in, if there's a club, they probably have an open mic night. And if you, if they don't, or if you don't, I'm sure there are other, if you're in any kind of city at all, I'm sure there, I'm sure there are open mics somewhere. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You could just Google it and try to find something or get on Facebook or whatever and look around or ask around, but you know, you just go to an open mic, sign up and then do it. And then you go back and do that again and you'll meet other comics and then the, you'll do shows with them and yada, yada. And then you just kind of go from there. But yeah, that's really all you can do. I want to piggyback on what Trey said just so that I can emphasize the importance of what it was he just said. You have got a major step already taken care of because so much of being good at stand up is being able, having stage presence. Um, it, so much of it. And you've already got that. And I say that because I started out stand up at 16 years old, right? In my opinion, it didn't like, I didn't fully click in and start talking about anything worthwhile or good until I was like 24. But by the time I finally figured out what to talk about, I had eight years of stage presence experience and I was fucking immediately good at it. You know what I mean? You can have all the great ideas in the world, but if you're up there bumbling and fumbling now, aside from like some dudes who like, that's their whole thing and they're really good at it. You think that they're up there. They're, they're like the nervous energy comics. They, they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? They know what they're fucking doing, but like so much of it is stage presence and being confident. Like I can't tell you how much of a leg up you will have if you've got both of those things. And like Trey said, yeah, uh, stand up is different than being in a band in the sense that you can 
you know, you can play your song in front of the mirror, and I think everybody can tell, like, oh, that's a that's a catchy song, that's a good song. And also, you can play a song in front of your friends, and it'll go over pretty well. If you try jokes out in front of your friends, it's weird. Like, I don't know, it's not the same as being in a crowd because the timing is going to be different. Like, you you're just going to have to learn all this shit. But yes, go do it. Um, and like I said, I think you got one of the hardest things already in your back pocket as a show idea. Please do a show on Austin Powers, In Like Flint, and James Bond. If you haven't seen In Like Flint, then you are missing that last piece of the triad. The reason I'm asking y'all is because you are some of my comedic heroes. <laughs> oh, my God. I put you up there with the greats. Carlin, Dangerfield, etc. Well, no, mm. but thank you. Um, yeah that just aren't recognized uh y'all are just not recognized as great yet your dynamic as a trio trey Corey, and drew is intriguing to me because it is obvious of your three different levels of comedic success and misgivings about it <laughs> that's funny <sighs> that's funny as shit yeah you're already hilarious i look forward to the podcast every week and sometimes re-listen to older episodes just to take a break from all the horrible things going on in the world then I listen to weekly skews to remind myself of all the horrible things going on in the <laughs> yeah. world. Dude, you're yeah. fucking funny. That's fucking, that's, you're writing jokes. Like, these are good. Um, love y'all. Love y'all from your number four fan. I'm sure that there are at least a couple bigger fans out there. Feel free to use my name, Joel D. Kaplan. All right, Joel D. Kaplan. I mean, dude, you're funny as fuck. I can go ahead and tell you that. Like, you got the writing part down. Uh, so, yeah, that's the airmail. For this week, uh, I, I'll leave you hanging. Next week, we're going to start out the airmail with one that subject line was sausage castle correction. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but I wanted to, I wanted it to have its fucking moment in the sun. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, good episode this week, buddy. I've had a lot of fun. Um, yeah. it's, it's been very fancy. I'm going to wear mm -hmm. that motherfucker out. Trey, tell everybody where you're going to be. Next weekend, I'll be in Austin, Texas at Vulcan. And after that, I got a five night, five city run through Ohio, hitting pretty much every city in Ohio. It's going to be fun. Then I got Lexington, then a bunch of other places. After that, go to TreyCrowder.com. TreyCrowder.com for tickets. Also, you can pre order our book around here and over yonder at TreyCrowder.com. Yes, so, please pre order the book around here and over I mean, yonder. Help soon, you'll be able to just straight up order it. By, that's right. Coming that's out right. Soon. But we would love it if, if you pre order it, you'll be able to get it first. If you're listening to this on the day it drops, Friday, um, I'll be in Raleigh all weekend at the improv with my good buddy Ismo. Uh, so y'all come check out the show. I will be there doing time in front of him, featuring, opening, however you want to call it, doing some of my new, brand new daddy stuff. So I'll see y'all in Raleigh this weekend. Um, also, parttimefunnyman.com y'all know that's where i do my bonus stuff and right now we are in the middle of a, a wonderful tale i have a, a, a series that i call tuesdays with Corey. right very original um where i tell stories and right now we're in the middle of a multi-parter called colonel cornbread and the case of the confederate ruby right it is a detective audio drama that i'm having a lot of fun with the first two episodes are out right now by subscribing to parttimefunnyman.com and new episodes drop every tuesday also you if you su subscribe you get the sunday sermon with pastor Petey perkins and the free for all friday as long as a bunch of other bonus shit that i'm doing characters it's a lot of fun we're building the world parttimefunnyman.com cup of coffee a month gets you the subscription but again it if you if you only have a little bit of money to do anything this month use it to get our book round here and over yonder thank you for supporting this show thank you for telling your friends thank you for like and subscribe and comment and all that stuff and remember most importantly please everyone stay fancy you Here's Lydia Loveless. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Royalty and rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong. Sit on down with Corey and Trey and learn some fancy shit. Today we'll laugh and let them leave. And when they're wrong, they'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. They keep it debonair at putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo!
As an adult, don't we all miss spring break? Nothing like taking a week off from all your responsibilities. Well, here's the next best thing for adults, a spring break from house payments. Savewithconrad.com can help you get rid of all your credit card debt just like that. We're routinely helping our listeners save five, six, seven, even 800 bucks a month. And you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this, but check this out. No house payments for two months at savewithconrad.com.